Welcome folks, Jason here again to walk you through what we're talking about when we're talking about outlining paths in Illustrator and why we would actually use this particular feature. And here it is under the object menu, path, outline, stroke. Well, let's take a look and see what we have in terms of outlines so we can see what we're talking about. And I'm going to go into the view menu go to outline mode and you can see this is what these lines and shapes look like when we're looking in outline mode and you'll notice that this line that we had here which was a wavy line if I go back under view and click on preview here this wavy line really isn't a wavy line because we have an effect on it but this line and this shape and these shapes all look exactly like they should when we go into outline mode, which is command or control Y. So if I wanted to begin to manipulate these shapes here, say I have this triangle and I use my direct selection tool, which is letter A, and I select the bottom path and I hit delete. It's going to delete the bottom portion of my shape. And you can see that the lines are going to give me a perpendicular end to that line. Well, what would happen if I wanted those ends to be horizontal? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover this up with a white shape here. And this is not how we would normally construct things. But what happens if I want it to look like this? So that the lines would be completely horizontal. Well, there's no method that I can use in order to chop off those lines in order to make them look horizontal here unless I go and turn this stroke into a shape because no matter how I cut these lines either using the scissor tool which is the letter C and a clicking on the path and adding a point to the path and cutting it and you got to click right on the path there there we go if I were to cut that and I were to remove that line right there I still get that angle so what I need to do is select the path with a selection tool go into the object menu path an outline stroke. Now that path is no longer a path, it's an actual shape. So if I go into outline mode here, you can now see that the width of that stroke is now converted into a path. Now if I'd like to cut off the bottom of those shapes, I can draw another shape over the top of this, take my selection tool, select all of my shapes, and here with a pathfinder panel, which you can find under the window menu, Pathfinder. I'm now going to use the minus front option, which is going to subtract the box that I just put in front, and it gives me the end result. So now I can get my legs to have horizontal bases. Quite useful. Here I have a line that I have gone in and I've capped the ends, round caps, which I call hot dogging the ends. Now, if I set this line to be a very hefty line, say 20 points, but I would like to make one end rounded and one end square, I can't do that on a stroke. All the ends are going to be the same, either blunt or rounded. So if I go into the object menu, path, outline stroke. Now, when I go into outline mode, you can see that this is no longer a stroke. It's an actual shape. And if I decided that I'd like to cut off that end, maybe at an angle, I can draw a shape over that. I'm going to rotate that, holding down my shift key, so I constrain the rotation to a 45 degree angle. Select both those shapes with a selection tool. Use the minus front mode in the pathfinder, and I now get what looks like a line with a hot dogged end and a beveled end. So, works kind of cool. If I were to go in and select this shape and I use my direct selection tool, drag over a segment that I'd like to delete. This, I have my rounded capped ends here. If I'd like to make one of these, you know, horizontal and one of them rounded, I would need to object, path, outline, stroke. Now I can do whatever I'd like to with this. I could cut this, I could divide this, I could section this apart. If I'd like to take this apart, I'm going to actually draw a line here. So I just use my line tool. I don't even have to have any stroke. Now I'm going to select both my object and my line. 
I'm going to go to my Pathfinder mode, which is going to be the divide. And then I have to make sure when I do this, I ungroup, because anytime I use the Pathfinder modes, it's always going to group my objects together. So if I go under Object Ungroup, I now have the ability to come in here and cut that shape apart. Now, if this were a line, I would get the rounded ends on this end of the line because it's still a line or a stroke. So here's something interesting that will happen when you have an object that has a fill. You'll notice when we select this line, the actual shape, if I go into outline mode, it's right there, and the actual stroke is being applied in the center of that line, both inside and outside that line. If I go under Object, Path, Outline Stroke, I will get this shape, and when I go into Outline Mode, it looks like I've got multiple shapes going on here. And I do, because I have both the path and the filled shape. I now have two things going on. So, this is grouped together, so I go under Object, Ungroup, deselect it, and now you can see I can move my fill separate from what used to be my stroke. But the fill is going to be not the exact same size as the inside of my stroke, because when I apply a stroke to my outside, and say it's 10, 20 points, it's always going to be applied to the inside and the outside of my actual line. So when I have my result here, my shape is going to be separate, but it will not be the exact same size as the inside here. And then I can take this apart, or I can manipulate this shape, say using my direct selection tool, if I'd like to do something like this. I couldn't do that with a stroke. It has to become an actual shape to do that with. Here, when I have my effect, and again, this is not a real wavy line, it's just the effect of a line because when I go into outline mode, which is Command or Control Y, you can see it's a straight line. And if I wanted to then manipulate this line or chop it, it wouldn't work the way I'd like it to because it's an effect. So if I go under the object menu, under path and outline stroke, it will then convert that line to an actual shape. And now I could, if I wanted to cut this off, I could use a line kind of as a slicing mechanism. I draw a line, select both my shape and my line, use the pathfinder mode to divide them. Make sure you go under object and ungroup, which is shift command G, and then I could break those apart. If I had created a line and I applied that same zigzag effect to it, let's pick a color, let's put a stroke on this. If I had gone into my effect and applied my zigzag to this, and I wanted to cut this apart while I have this effect on it, I could draw a line through here, like this. And then I'm going to use both of these objects here, and I'm going to use my Pathfinder mode to divide. It's going to go ahead and create some weird things. And the reason why is because I can't go in and divide something with an effect. It won't let me do this. So I need to go in and I need to convert this to something that I can chop apart. So it's not necessary to take all of your strokes and turn them into a path, but there's things that you can do with a path that you can't normally do with a stroke. Now, one other really good feature that um, we have here is the object and then the expand appearance. Now I have a video on expand and expand appearance because when we go directly from path outline stroke, we skip over a very important part of converting something with an effect to an actual path. And that's what expand appearance is going to do. But check out my other video on that so you have a better understanding of how that works.